is Becky Lidd and I'm founder of Sensory Spectacle. This video is part of a series where I'm answering your questions about sensory processing difficulties. I've been given questions from parents and professionals and it's all to help create a better understanding and awareness of sensory processing difficulties. Share the videos with your friends and families and colleagues but also subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you don't miss any. So in this video I'm going to be explaining why we might recognise sensory characteristics as being maybe misrecognised as could be signs of anxiety or hyperactivity, um, especially within maybe education environments or group settings. So first of all I just want to say that there's a big misunderstanding in, in relation to the word hyper. So when we're thinking about sensory processing disorder, someone who's hypersensitive means that they're processing all of say the auditory sensations in their environment and their brain when they receive those messages is telling them that they're all important. So if I was hearing all of the sounds around me, my brain would be picking up on those vibrations, whether it's technology, whether it's lights, whether it's radiators, whether it's external sounds, so things like the wind or aeroplanes or cars driving past, as well as conversations. And when I'm organising those messages, I'm feeling like my brain's making me aware that all of those sounds are really important. So I might find it really overwhelming. And so if I'm hypersensitive, you may well recognize me covering my ears, putting my fingers in my ears, or simply removing myself from that environment. Or if I'm aware of what stimulus it is, removing myself from that stimulus that's overwhelming me. When we're thinking about someone who's hyperactive, we're observing someone who is has lots of energy and is bouncing around maybe the classroom or really excited, really excitable. And sometimes when someone comes back into the classroom, say after lunchtime or break time or even in the morning, students who move around and bounce and walk around the classroom, maybe running around the classroom, who seem to pick things up and fidget with things, if someone's less aware of sensory processing disorder, they may well presume that that child's hyperactive. Whereas if that child has sensory processing difficulties, it may well be that that movement, so them running and walking around the classroom, picking things up, fidgeting with things, jumping, is actually a sign of what that child or young person or adult's body needs. So the movement is showing us that they're looking for, they're seeking for extra proprioceptive or vestibular input. If someone's fidgeting with things, maybe they're looking for extra proprioceptive or tactile input. So the characteristics that we observe relating to someone who seeks out sensation, so they're hyposensitive, may be misunderstood as someone who's hyperactive. So if someone's hyperactive, we will try and calm them in order to be able to help them, them to work. However, for someone who's seeking out those sensations because their body needs it, they'll need that input in order for them to also to be able to learn. So they will need to have some kind of vestibular or proprioceptive input while they're sitting doing their work or while they're engaged in listening to their teacher or to other people in their group to be able to work together. So that's really, really important. Now the signs of anxiety if you imagine if you've walked into a space and maybe it's really noisy or it's really overwhelming, you may well show signs of anxiety in the sense of you may well prefer to stay in one place, you may well be enclosed because you're really trying hard to just block everything else that's happening around you. So if you're really overwhelmed with, say, the auditory again, I may well sit fidgeting with my fingers or focusing on something visual, so flickering something, because that's how I'm able to best block out all of these sounds that I'm being overwhelmed with. It may well be that someone finds it difficult to be in a certain room or space, so they may well take themselves back out. Or they may not 
be able to, they may not recognise for themselves that they're being overwhelmed, so they may prefer to be on the side of a room or sit away from other people. People are unpredictable. And we know for children and adults with sensory processing difficulty, they need to feel in control. And so if someone's gone into an environment and they don't feel like they're in control, so let's think about assemblies at school, it may well be a special day in an assembly, which means that things are being done differently. For people with sensory processing difficulties, that unpredictability may be difficult for them to be able to manage, to be able to support themselves with. And so there may well be signs of anxiety because they're not sure what's going to be happening next. I also want to mention when we're thinking about anxiety, we may well think about someone who leaves that space, we may well think about someone who likes to be within their own space or by themselves, or we may well see other physical responses or physical kind of, I need to leave this space, or maybe a sickness or, or a nauseous feeling. And I just want to relate this to our sense of smell because smell's a massively important sensory system but we often miss it because it's really difficult for us to, to recognise and to highlight. So for people who are hyper sensitive to smell, the way that we process smell is in the limbic part of our brain which is also where we process and understand emotions. So a smell will have an emotional response which will also help to trigger and, and give me memories. So if I walked past someone who wore a perfume that my grandma used to wear, I may well feel an emotion, maybe a happy or a sad feeling, but also bring back a memory of my grandma. If someone is hypersensitive to smell, so they're, they're easily, they're processing too many of the smell sensations around them and really being overwhelmed by it. So imagine constantly not being able to forget a smell that's really intense. So an air freshener in, air freshener in a room and it's there, it's not going anywhere. My body's way of responding to something that's over, so really powerful in, t in regards to our sense of smell, might be to gag. It might be to be sick. It might be to physically remove myself from that environment because that's the quickest and most effective way that I've learned I can regulate out that smell. Now imagine when you go into an environment that smells maybe of something not terribly nice, so pretty unpleasant, what do you do when you go into that space? And just think about that. Do we help to teach children, young people and adults to communicate to us about if a smell's overwhelming for them. So we might hold our nose as a child, maybe as an adult, we don't see many adults walking around holding their noses. You might just remove yourself from that room or you may well give yourself 10, 15, 20 seconds because you know after that period of time, you are more likely to be able to ignore or forget that smell. But for people who are hypersensitive to smell, that's difficult. And so the way that I'm going to respond to that may be just to physically remove myself from that environment. So when we're observing, when someone's recognising signs of anxiety or signs of hyperactivity, actually we also need to consider if that, one, that person has sensory processing disorder, are they actually showing us signs that is telling us what their body needs and how they're regulating themselves within that environment?